Hello, and uh, welcome back to Chino Does Stuff. I'm glad you've, you're joining me on this episode of this series on SPFX. Now, it's been quite a while since I did my last video, but I thought it was probably time to come back to this series as I have been getting a lot of questions on the channel about um, SPFX and the video that I did last year on the subject. Um, I did promise in that video I was going to do a follow-up to show SharePoint lists or interacting a SharePoint uh, SPFX web part interacting with the SharePoint list. So the time has come to do that. Now I'm going to try to do the simplest demo for you today and um, that's also going to involve some of the concepts or well, a lot of the concepts that I covered in my first video. Now if you're coming to this um, video and you haven't seen that first one I really suggest, I strongly suggest that you go back and watch that one um, because it's going to cover a lot of concepts about generating the SPFX web part that I will not be covering in this in this video. Let me link to it on the screen right now. Got that? You don't have to click away. You can watch this video if you want, or you can go away and watch that one and come back to this one later. Do what you want. Um, but let's get on with today's video. As you can see, I've got in front of me a SharePoint list. Well, I've got a SharePoint site open, an Office 365 SharePoint Online site. And <clears throat> this is actually a site that I've used in another video of mine. But I just thought it was a pretty good list to display or to interact with today. You know, if we're designing apps around SharePoint lists and we don't necessarily want to use uh, a platform like Power Apps, we just want to maybe just to display some content to the screen from a SharePoint list or maybe show a little update web part or create something that can be easily deployed through a web part to our SharePoint farm. SPFX is a really good option there and especially if you're a JavaScript slash TypeScript wizard or you've built lots of um, SPFX web parts in the past and you played around with things like um, uh, you know the rest web services that connect to SharePoint um, then SPFX is really the um, next stage in that evolution it, particularly because Microsoft have decided to remove the SP um, sorry they've decided to remove the script editor web part from um, SharePoint, modern SharePoint online sites, I, I dare say that the script editor web part will eventually just disappear completely. Um, so if, um, you know, it, it's a really good idea to move forward and get into working with SPFX. Now, like I said, I've got a SharePoint list here in front of me, but let's create today a SPFX web part that displays that content in a um, rather than uh, displaying it on just a standard SharePoint list form page, we're going to display it on, uh, like through our web part on our home page of this site. And you know, the other really cool thing we get with SBFX is that we can deploy this web part anywhere we like. And um, you know, if we don't make it modifiable through parameters, we um, we can just quickly go change the code base and redeploy it. But you know, obviously uh, the way to do this would be to create some parameters so we could set up our web part to connect to any list across any site. Now, um, I'm not gonna do that today. We're gonna keep the demo really simple. So let me just dive straight in and take a look at our web part. Now, I've already generated it. Um, so like I said, if you haven't generated or you haven't worked with SPFX before, go back and watch my first web part, um, my first video in this series, because it will really explain all these sort of concepts of uh, generating a web part first. And then I've really tried to aim that video at the beginner as well. So um, if you haven't done that before, that video will really step you through how to do all this. Now, presuming you have watched that video, let's open up the SPFX, oh, sorry, SPListDemoWebPart.ts. Now this is the file that gets generated when I generate my project and it contains all the main um, TypeScript code for my web part. 
And if you, uh, the other thing I'm not going to be doing in today's video is diving into TypeScript and explaining the concepts of TypeScript. If you haven't worked with TypeScript before, or you're sort of, you know, just coming from the Java, the straight JavaScript world, um, you can the, sort of, the, you know, you can pick up bits and pieces that I'm showing you here, and you certainly you can just pick up a sort of copy and paste basically what I've done here into your own code um, without really understanding a great deal of it at this stage. Um, as long as it works, I think, and you're able to modify and manipulate that code, I think you um, it's a good place to start with. So in between these two uh, comments here, this section is the code I'm going to use to connect to my SharePoint list. Now um, you can see the first one here is um, this sp HTTP library. Now that is um, going to allow us to connect to our SharePoint list via the REST API. So again, if you haven't worked with the SharePoint REST API, some of these concepts may be a little bit foreign to you as well, but I suggest uh, if you haven't done that before, maybe go away and have a look at some of the um, some of the Microsoft documentation on that. But effectively, um, the REST API allows you, well, the, the Microsoft SharePoint REST API allows you to connect to SharePoint using REST web services and um, interact with SharePoint components like SharePoint lists. It's really handy and, um, you know, if you if you built SP if you built uh, script editor web parts in the past, you would have used um, and you built single page apps in particular. You most likely have used that REST web API for a SharePoint. Right, so this is going to allow us to do that. I've also created a um, an array here just to support our um, REST call. And I've defined the array item here as well. And these, um, this you can see there, this is a record that um, is going to return back those list items. And if we go, if I quickly flip over to the SharePoint page again, you can see those um, columns here correspond to the data, the data I'm defining for that record. Let me go back. And you can see that's there. So I've, I'm just hard coding this list here to connect to my SharePoint list. And if, when you're doing this on your SPFX web part, you will do the same for your SharePoint list that you're using. So you can see the next part of the web part is our default class here. Now your your project will also have this. It, it's called S, this default class is called SP List Demo Web Part. Um, because that's what I've called my project. Now, if I scroll down, just ignore this code for the moment, we can see our render method. Now, by default, there'll be, if you uh, remember from the previous video, there's some default um, HTML in here that that is rendered um, as our web part content. So I've just stripped most of that. And within here, I've just created a div container that's um, where my code is going to target for our uh, list content. And that's really all I need in that render section. It's going to be a really simple demo, as I said. And the last thing I do in the render method is that I call this function that I've created called underscore render list. So if we go up and we look at render list, um, I'm calling this get list data function. Now, if we look, I've defined get list data up here, but let's keep going um, down and just have a look at what get underscore get list data does. So, if we look, I'm just creating some uh, uh, in here. I'm defining a HTML uh, variable that's going to be our string, which is what we're going to use to build up our table data inside of that section that I declared. Now, um, a lot of this from this point on, if you have built single page app, apps before, should start looking quite familiar because we've got this loop here that we, um, that we run through to create our, um, our list, our table. 
So, and go through this response from the web service. So if we go in, we have a look here, here's our HTML table, and I've defined the headers here, title, part number, supplier, and stock. And then I've got this, um, I'm looking at the response.value, which is how I access what the um, value of that response from this previous function that I've run. And for each item, because I know this response is an array, I'm defining that each item that I'm looking at is of type SP list item, which is what I showed you back up here is going to be that record type. So that's what I'm expecting to be in the array. And I know that from, um, because I understand my data that I'm connecting to my SharePoint list. So if we go back down. So for each item, I am just create, I'm adding, I'm concatenating to the HTML variable, the, this um, HTML string. So I'm creating uh, a row in the table for each um, item, each value that I want to display. So here I've got item dot title, part number, supplier and stock and they correspond to the values inside of that response. And, um, you know, once that loop is finished, I all I have to do is add another slash table tag at the bottom of that. And the very last thing is I use this, um, I define this uh, co constant called list container and it's a, L a type of HTML element. And then I'm just looking at the DOM element query selector i'm looking for that particular container name which i defined down here in render and i know that's already been rendered because i'm running these functions after i've rendered that to the screen so i know that exists and the uh, last thing i do is is i make that i push that string into that container so let's quickly take a look at this underscore get list data function, which I've defined right at the top. So if we take a close, if we take a quick look at this, you can see here I've defined the SharePoint list that I'm connecting to. And that is the, um, that should be, again, that should be quite familiar to you if you've used the REST API before, because here, this is just our API URL to um, our SharePoint list. And we can see one of the last things here is it returns a response.json. So um, um, this is effectively already passed for us. The response is already passed as a JSON object for us, is it? So that's why we are able to um, access this in the, our render list function as an array already. So now that I've got my code, let me just quickly create our package. This should just take a couple of seconds because I'd already done it before and Okay, so our package should now be created. If we take a look under the SharePoint slash solution folder, I can see our spplist.sppkg file has been generated under that folder. So that's what we need to publish our app to SharePoint. So let me just have a quick look at that, open that up. Let's go back to our SharePoint site. And here, what I need to do now is open my app catalog, go to apps for SharePoint. This is a real simple part. I just drag that on there. I do trust it because I trust myself. That's done. And that seems to have worked fine and it's published correctly. Okay, so let's take a look at the web part in action. The first thing we need to do is go to our site contents and we have to add that app now to the site 
that we just created. So if you scroll down, should be in here somewhere. Okay. SP Lisp client side solution. Click on that. It's going to take a couple of seconds here. We can see it's grayed out, so it's still installing it, but pretty small, so it shouldn't take too long. All right, so that's done. And now that's made that available to the site. So the last thing, we, all we need to do next is just go to our home page and click edit. And in here, I just want to add a new web part. So if I scroll down, let's have a look. Where are you? Don't make a liar out of me. Where are you? Ooh, here we go, SP list demo. Click on that and there you go. I can now see my content. Let's just republish that. I can now see my content in a SPFX web part. And this is coming straight from that SharePoint list. Give my video a thumbs up if you appreciated it. And I guess even give it a thumbs down because apparently that also helps the channel. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.